Hey everybody, Control Alt Bang back again with another video. Today I want to talk about something that's pretty surprising. A game that actually did something right for a change. In today's market of always online service trash, hearing the term always online never fails to send chills down my spine. Coming fresh off the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League disaster, and with the visions of Diablo 4, game servers are not available, still fresh in my mind. I gotta admit, I was a little nervous when I was met with the same message here on Helldivers 2. But then I took a little deeper look into it, and honestly, I couldn't be more thrilled to have been proven wrong. If you are like me and millions of other people across the world, you have been loving Helldivers 2. This new game from Arrowhead Game Studios puts you in the boots of an elite warrior from Super Earth, the futuristic, over-the-top vision of an Earth that has been completely unionized in the common goal of staving off the legions of automatons and terminids. The fighting is visceral, the atmosphere is desolate, and the teamwork is necessary. While you may just be another cog in the machine being constantly thrown into the meat grinder, this game does something not many have tried before. At least, not to this scale and definitely not this successfully. You see, every action you do in this game contributes to the overall war effort. I'm doing my part! Similar to games like Foxholes, there is a constant battle raging on in the galaxy, that you and your team can choose to take part in. Looking at the star system, you see two different conflicts on the eastern and western fronts. On the east, you are fighting the Terminids, the bug creatures popularized in Starship Troopers. These enemies attack in seemingly endless waves, closing the gap on you in an attempt to rip you apart piece by piece. You will need nothing short of overwhelming fire superiority to survive against this onslaught. And then on the west, you have a war of attrition against the automatons, a massive cyborg army, relentless and strong. Mixing in ranged and close combat, you will need solid communication and accurate well-placed shots to bring these guys down. Looking at each planet in the chosen conflict, you will see a meter showing just how liberated the planet is. And this is where the community aspect comes in. As you complete objectives, the liberation meter will slowly begin to rise until full, and then you can move on to the next region. However, it is entirely possible to lose a planet entirely, which will make the missions there that much more difficult as the number of enemies you'll have to fight will easily overwhelm any Helldiver who sets foot on the ground if they aren't being careful. One thing I noticed which really excites me is that Super Earth has its own liberation meter, which at the time of this recording is a solid 100% liberated. But this inclusion gives rise to the possibility that if all other planets fall to the enemy, could they conquer us on our home turf? Only time will tell. But Helldivers 2 isn't just about teamwork, it's about freedom of choice. The game offers a vast array of customization options allowing players to tailor their loadouts, tactics, and playstyles to suit their preferences. Whether you prefer to jump into the fray guns blazing or take a more stealthy approach, Helldivers 2 gives you the tools to play it your way. Now that the exposition is out of the way, I want to talk about some issues that people are having with the game. If you're like me, you've been trying to jump into this game every chance you could get which may be difficult seeing that there are about 450,000 other people on just Steam alone trying to do the exact same thing. The massive explosion in popularity this game has had is doing a number on Arrowhead servers as they've never expected this type of support from the players. On Twitter, they recently announced they're going to limit the online players to around 350,000 to maintain optimal server performance, but that still leaves hundreds of thousands of players on PC and console waiting and looking at the servers at capacity error message. I know I've seen it quite a few times already. And normally this would infuriate me. This is a symptom of live service games that require a constant internet connection to play. The most recent one being the new Suicide Squad game, where you would be kicked from the middle of a game because the servers hosting the session just decided to take a nap. The reason it's a problem there and not here is the reason behind why the servers dropped out in the first place. You see, with games like Suicide Squad and many other live service titles, there really is no need to be online to play. These games could and should be played entirely single player, or if necessary, via couch co-op if you absolutely have to play with more people. The need to be online only was only put in their place to implement DRM and drive traffic towards their storefront. Now, it's entirely possible that this could have been a non-issue for most gamers. Maybe they wouldn't even have noticed it. But due to the shoddy implementation of their always online system, the servers were trashed from day one. This is why the developers refused to release any early access review copies. Even the devs had no faith in their game, and it truly shows in their final product. Helldivers 2, on the other hand, 
Arrowhead has released constant updates via their Twitter, announcing what they are doing to address any and all issues people are having with their game. I haven't had a chance to verify at the time of this recording, but they claim to have released a patch that will expand the number of people the server can support, and I cannot wait to try it out. It's a shame this issue occurred in the first place, as I've talked to many friends who've returned the game because of these server issues, when this is definitely a rare gem among the trash we've been getting lately. What really sets this game apart from the others is that this feels like more than just a game. It feels like an experience that is revolutionizing the gaming industry. I feel like we're at a real turnaround point right here. Arrowhead has shown that in just a few short weeks the game has been out, that they plan to continue engaging with the community to improve their game. They've made it clear that Helldivers 2 is not just another revenue source for them, but a platform for continued growth and innovation with plans for future updates, expansions, and community events. In conclusion, Helldivers 2 is more than just a sequel. It's a testament to not only the power of cooperation, but to the heights developers can reach when they show a true interest to put passion back into gaming. With an emphasis on teamwork, freedom, and community engagement, Helldivers 2 is paving the way for a new era of cooperative shooters that we truly need. With the recent release and explosion of PAL World, 2024 is hitting the ground running, and I am so excited to see where this year heads. There are multiple indie and small dev games that I'm currently wishlisting on Steam, including Blight, Grey Zone Warfare, and Beautiful Light, just to name a few, and they're all expected to release later this year. I truly believe that this is the year us gamers can strike back against these lazy AAA publishers who try their hardest to cut corners and finally vote with our wallets. If you haven't checked out Helldivers 2 yet, I definitely recommend it. And if you're among the people who are going to wait for the servers to be fully expanded to handle the amount of people playing this title, don't worry. There'll be plenty of bugs for you to kill when you get here. So grab your friends, gear up, and prepare to dive into the adventure of a lifetime. Thanks for watching this video, and I look forward to creating more content surrounding the games we all love. Good shit, boys.